Good evening. You made it here, despite the heat, despite the rain, you made it here. So welcome, we're very glad you're here. How many of you did gift last year? Ah, so we have a lot of new people this year. Well, um, for those who were here last year, um, Rosemary Potts, the Director of Faith Formation, and I kind of tag team for the gift presentations. Rosemary has um, the privilege of getting to move back home to Pittsburgh, which she will be doing in just a short time, another week. Um, she'll be back to her home and also to her grandbaby. So we wish her very well. We will miss her, but we wanted to reassure you that the program will go on because it has strong roots and a great foundation and a very specific and noble purpose, assisting all of you as you assist in your children and journey through, uh, and journey with them through their faith, their development. It's not done in a month. It's not done in a six-week course. It's done over our lifetimes. So be patient with yourselves. And we are here to be right there with you on this process. We'd like to begin, the, um, we're very aware of time commitments that everybody has. So we're going to try and be very concise and to the point and make this a worthwhile period of time for you. We always start with prayer. This year, throughout GIFT, we are going to concentrate on praying for each other, for our families, for our community. So if you will join me in this prayer for families, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. God and Father of us all, in Jesus your Son and our Savior, you have made us your sons and daughters in the family of the church. May your grace and love help our families in every part of the world be united to one another in fidelity to the gospel. May the example of the Holy Family, with the aid of your Holy Spirit, guide all families, especially those most troubled, to be homes of communion and prayer, and to always seek your truth and live in your love. <clears throat> Through Christ our Lord, amen. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, pray for us. Sometimes we forget. They were a family too. I wonder if they ever experienced some of the challenges we experience. I'm sure they did. They had to go find him, Jesus, back in the church. Um, we do have an honored participant in tonight's session, um, our pastor, Monsignor Peter, who has some words to share. Thank you, Marianne. Thank you. Thank you. You know, the vision for the parish, as we've crafted it now for the, everybody, and you'll be hearing this later on, is, is a Catholic community rooted in Jesus now taking now his mercy and love into the world. And that begins at home and then nurtured in the church and continues on. So what we're doing today is something very special. And I want you to know that you and your family and your journey of faith are very important now to me, but also important now to the people of God, the rest of the church, the community of faith. And so I thank you for kind of being out here today and being part of this as well. We are in our fifth year of family faith formation, and it has proven to be a wonderful experience now. Part of my role as pastor is to work with you and your family to realize these shared goals of growing in the faith as a family together. You know, we always talk about the little ones and, but it's really all of us together. If it doesn't happen at home, it's not gonna happen anywhere. So we're here to help you and the family grow together, being fully alive now in our Lord and growing now in an awareness of who he is for us and nurturing us. To say that means that we are not asking you to be experts or theologians 
all those things. We just want you to be participants in the faith life of your kids. Just as you would do for any sports program or dance program, you're there now to encourage them, to help them. If you know something, you'll share it with them, but you're journeying with them. And in so journeying with them, hopefully you yourself may be coming to an awareness of something that you didn't know before. So it's all a process together. So I thank you for being here. I thank you for your yes and to your sons, your daughters, and whatever happens, the Holy Spirit continues now to work and to journey with us. And so I'm gonna turn it over to Cynthia now to share a little information about what we're about. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you, Monsignor. All right. I'm Cynthia Camareri, and I am part of the Faith Formation team. Um, I've been here for a couple years, and I've worked mostly with the Faith Five families, creating that um, information for you guys. How many are Faith Five families? Most of you. Okay, good. This will be a great overview of our program. Like Monsignor said, well, before I start that, let me do some housekeeping first. Um, you all have bins on your table. There's paper and pencils in there. If you think of a question, write it down. We will have a, a question answer portion at the very end. Um, and so we're looking for kind of general questions. If you have a very specific question dealing with your family or something like that, write it down with your name, email, um, and your kids' ages, because that may change our answer, and give it to us, and we will email you an answer. So that will be for questions. Um, we have a PowerPoint presentation going, but at the end, we will have some um, um, forms for you, uh, documents that will show this um, PowerPoint presentation. And so you don't have to take pictures of the screen or anything like that. Just go ahead and listen, and we will give you um, those forms at the end, okay? So like Monsignor said, GIFT has been going on. This will be the fifth year, and it is a family-based program. And we at the end of last year, looked at both Faith Five and GIFT. And what we found with Faith Five, whereas people were, you guys all did an amazing job, but it was trying to fit those pamphlets into a family-based program. And it was very difficult, especially if you had multiple kids. You're trying to do something with your older kids, with a sixth grader, and then something with your second grader at the same time. The one constant we had in there was the family activities, and you will see how we have pulled that into the gift program along with what they've been doing presently. So we're trying to take the best of both programs and, in, and put them into gift. We've kept the gift name because it's been around, like we said, this is the fifth year. So hopefully we will be able to answer all your questions about what's going to happen this year. All right. So the first thing is, what is your family commitment for GIFT? What you will find is we will have one in-person session once a month. And that's where your entire family comes. You probably will meet in here, start out and do some family activities. And then I will go into more of what the in-person gatherings will be. And then you will have at home faith formation explorations as well as gospel encounters. The faith family explorations are exactly what we did before, the family activities. So we will have an overall theme for the year, which this year is Catholic identity. Every month when you come, it will be kind of a new, th a new a, sorry, a theme under Catholic identity. So we will have Mary and the Saints. We will have prayer. We'll have the Mass. Those are just to name a couple of them. And so for that month, you will learn more about that theme. You will then have two at-home explorations. And so those would be like your family activities. You won't have anything else, just those family activities. We will also have what are we called gospel encounters because with Faith Five, it was wonderful because it was always based around 
that Sunday's gospel. And so we've gone to the same company. They have this book called Our Catholic Family. Everyone's going to get this book, and every week we will have you turn to a certain page. That will be the Sunday gospel. And in here they have some family activities you can do if you wish. There are conversation starters. But it's a great way for you to either do it before Mass so that you know what the gospel is, or do it after Mass so you can talk to your kids about what the gospel was. I had a question earlier about, well, we had done something and we went back in and we were, the form was disabled. If you're doing these gospel encounters, say you get three weeks and you haven't done one, we'll say, don't worry about the past, go on to the next gospel encounter because that's what we're trying to really emphasize is what's going on with the gospel on Sunday. So let's go back to the in-person What will happen there? You guys, like I said, will meet here in the parish hall as a family. We may do some family activities. Then we have the kids go to their own breakout sessions. They're back in the classrooms. If anybody brought kids today, one of the classrooms is six, seven. And we will have catechists in there. And we will do age appropriate, whatever the theme is for that month. You as parents stay in here, and Marianne, who is wonderful at this, will do a parent presentation on what that theme is. And so it's enabling you to get more information about it, get vocabulary, so if your children are asking you a question for when you're doing your at-home explorations, you will be able to share with them, okay? So that's the in-person. We have something called, so it kind of looks weird, pre-K third through versus pre-K six. When we decided to form everyone into one group, this last year we had over 300 families participating in some form of faith formation. And that totaled about over a thousand bodies. We can't fit a thousand people into one session here in the parish hall. So what we did is we looked at the database and we we found that third grade is a really great cutoff. So if you are a family whose oldest child is third grade, you have a third grade and younger, you are part of this pre-K to third group. If you have children older than that, fourth, fifth, or sixth, you are probably, you are part of the pre-K through sixth group. And you will see on the calendar, what we did is we will have two different Sundays now. One will be for the pre-K third and one will be for the pre-K six. On each of those Sundays, we will have two sessions, one at nine and one at 11. So when you register, that's what you will choose. You will say nine o'clock works for me and I have third grade and younger, so I'm gonna do the pre-K through third group. So you'll get a calendar at the end um, outlining the whole year, all right? So at home explorations, what does that mean? Like I said, there will be two family activities, very similar to what you did last year. Based on the theme, you guys will do it as a family, have some good discussions about it, and then the weekly gospel encounters that we were talking about. So how do you access these explorations? When you come to the in-person, you will get a kit, a bag with those two family explorations, It will probably be in a Ziploc bag with directions. We are going to simplify. We will no longer have the 10-page packet that you guys had last year. I know everyone loved going through all those pages, but we will have it where it's probably just front and back, directions on what to do. It will probably, um, we haven't written everything up, but it'll probably be where age appropriate. If you have second and younger, do the expiration this way. If you have wide range of, children, age of children, do it this way. But we will try to keep it very straightforward and simple so that it's not overwhelming. We will again use the live binder, which is a great way to keep track of what you're doing. You'll go in and you will see that month's explorations, any um, additional 
information. We may add some videos in there. We may add some articles, things like that, but it will be on the live binder and you will re receive, just like we did last year, um, newsletters every week. It'll have the access code. You can go directly in there and you will be able to access if for some reason you weren't able to get to the in-person or if, like me, I put down my bag somewhere and then I forget where it is, you'll be able to access it through Live Binder. And then, like I said, you will have this book as well. We will make sure everybody gets this book. All right. And in case you forgot what Live Binder looked like, here's a picture. So it'll have all the tabs and everything like that. All right. So what is your time commitment? Parent prep. Parent prep is very important. You need to be able to read through your family activities before you start. There's nothing more patient than a seven-year-old who wants to go right now and you're reading the directions. So instead, go ahead and prep it beforehand. Just read through. Think of some questions that you want to ask your kids. Things like that. How you will do this craft if it's a craft that week. You know, different things like that so that you're prepared. It's only about 20 to 30 minutes of prepping that activity. When you actually sit down to do the activity, again, it's approximately 30 minutes. All of this is dependent on your family. If you have very young children, they'll probably get very short answers to your questions. You won't take 30 minutes. But if you have fifth and sixth graders who are going to go through this sacrament of confirmation, you may want to talk to them more. Or second graders, there may be something on the mass that you want to really drive home. So it may take a little bit longer. But they should take about 30 minutes. And then the weekly gospel encounters, probably about 10 minutes to go through. Just so you know that gift is, um, it, uh, sorry, for anyone that has special needs kids, GIFT is an inclusive program. We do have the kids with special needs come into the classrooms. We do have helpers that come in if needed. Um, but we also have um, Jean Lyons, who is our special needs coordinator. And so we do have some other um, groups that meet Shine and Crossbeams, if that's um, a better fit for you. We are always looking for volunteers, of course. We are looking for catechists to help us in the breakout sessions. We're looking for classroom aides, and that is um, when we're talking about the pre-K through six or pre-K through third. If you have older kids that have already gone through confirmation, bring them. We love to put them in the classrooms. The kids love to have the older kids in the classrooms. It's a great way for them to share their faith also to the younger kids. So those would be more of the classroom aides. Um, we have two sessions per Sunday. So any help we can get to prep this room, especially in between the sessions and the classrooms, we need help with that. Um, if um, right before a gift session, the monthly session, we do need help putting together the bags. And then we have special family events throughout the year. Last year we started Parents' Night Out, which was a great success. Um, we had kids from our faith formation programs as well as Queen of Angels. And they would come and usually had a theme. Um, we had one of the themes was paper airplanes. The kids loved it did all sorts of things with paper airplanes, and they would just play. They'd eat dinner and play for an hour and a half and had a great time. So those are some of our special events. We also do, during Lent, um, family rosary and family stations. So help in those is always needed. How do you register? Registration will open July 1st. You can go online to our website. That is where our registration will be. You will receive a newsletter with a link to the registration. So there's a whole bunch of places that you can go to to get the registration going. All you will be doing is filling out your information. You do not pay at that point. 
The cost of the program is $125 per family, and you will receive an invoice from Cindy, our registrar. So don't pay at that point. Wait for the invoice to come. All right, and if for any reason, we will not turn anybody away for financial reasons, so just contact us if you need tuition assistance um, or scholarship assistance. So we have a couple families here. Who's gonna talk from you guys? Is it Paige? There we go. So we have Paige and Eric, and they are some of our Long-time members of GIFT. They are OGs. So they just wanted, we just wanted to have someone else tell you about the program. Oh, it's me? Okay. I'm, <laughs> I'm loud. I'll, I'll, after, uh, oh, I'm loud most of the time anyway. Yeah, I'm, I know. I have to hold it down here. Um, <clears throat> so we were trying, as, as Paige and I were talking earlier today about what to tell you guys about GIFT, at least for those that haven't done it, right? Um, and hopefully I don't get in too much trouble off of it. I'm... I'm it's hard. Everybody has time commitments, right? It is, it, you know, everybody has things in their lives, whether it's sports. We have two kids that play sports. Um, we obviously are very involved in the parish, but time is hard. I will say that it is some of the most rewarding time that you have the opportunity to spend with your kids. It is a time that will not, that you will not get back it is a time that you can grow together with them because we're all on a journey, right? We're all on a journey in terms of where we're going. And then it can feel a little bit uncomfortable, right? There's going to be things that maybe you don't remember from when you went through K or K PSR um, or CCD when I think when I, when I grew up. Um, and that's okay. Like we're, uh, you know, it's, oh, and it's okay to tell your kids that, oh, you know what? We're learning this all together. And, but it is a very, very, very rewarding experience. Coming from a place where we used to pick up our kids at PSR, we'd get them in the, we'd get them in the car and talk to them about, what do you, what'd you talk about today? It's like pulling teeth. I don't, I don't remember. We talked something about the rosary or parting of the seas. That was a very, at least from my perspective, very frustrating experience for me and I think for Paige as well, to not understand what they were going through, what they were learning and being able to help any, any amount of reinforcement. And so the one, the one advantage I saw was that I got to live that, or we got to, I don't wanna say I, that's pretty bad. Um, but I, we got to live that and wor work and walk with them and help to be a part of that and be able to really truly um, experience that with them. And as I said, it's, it's it, it, you know, we, were, we are one of the first family, uh, you know, part of the first gift program. We started in when, it, when it first started. Um, and it was really, it, it, to me, for, for both of us, it was really, really rewarding. Anything you want to? Sure. Hi, everybody. Um, one of the things that I really enjoyed about the gift program was the monthly gathering with the other families. We live out in Cherokee County, our kids go to public school, and so this was the only opportunity that we had to be with a small group of Catholic families. I mean, out of our friend groups, like we're the only Catholics. So all of our friends, their kids all go to Woodstock City, you know, and we come here. So it was really special to me to be able to spend, you know, some time with other Catholic families who were going through the same, you know, things that we were, and we were learning and growing together. And so when you come to that monthly group, I strongly encourage you to, you know, be open with the people at your table, share numbers, look to, you know, meet up outside, you know, if you're somebody like us that, you know, you don't have that Catholic support, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, but look for ways to get with these people and, you know, do the, um, you know, they have those, uh, like the family rosaries and whatnot. And so I enjoyed it so much because like Eric said, we're on a journey. And so 
I didn't know a lot of <laughs> a lot of what they were. I mean, I know some. I mean, I'm a cradle Catholic, but it was really nice to have somebody at my table that was, you know, kind of on the walk with me. That were like, oh, I struggled this month. How did you do? Well, I did not do very well. What did you guys, you know, what worked for you? So it was really important that connection that we were able to have as a table. So I would just strongly encourage you that as you come together on that monthly that monthly time, to be open and share what's been going on and to just learn from one another because I think at the beginning we were a little bit nervous and we didn't really talk to anybody, but I found that when we started to really open up to one another, um, it was great. We had some really great conversation and we learned a lot and we really enjoyed it. So it's, that's, it was really special in a time, especially during COVID when we were all by ourselves. So <laughs> it was nice to really come together as a group of a Catholic family. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, they really touch on a very important element of all of this, which is community. We are trying to build our family faith community. It's so important. It's important for your kids. We start them at a young age in the classrooms. They will get to know each other. Um, you guys are... I don't even know how many schools are represented in our area because we have three school districts, Cobb, Fulton, and Cherokee. So it's hard. My kids all went to PSR. I really didn't meet anybody until I got involved as an edge teacher for the middle school. And then I started meeting more people here at the church. But by having you guys come in as a family once a month, having you participate in some of the extra activities that we do, it gives you connection to our church and to our community. And so that's really our goal because the more that you're here showing your children their faith, that's what they're going to remember. Think back when you were a kid and you were going to PSR or CCD or whatever. I, I really don't remember any of those classes, little snippets, but I do remember going to mass with my mom. My dad wasn't Catholic, but he supported. He made sure I was up so that I went to church. But, you know, it was, it was going to mass with my mom. It was celebrating the sacraments making, you know, looking back and seeing their smiles. That's what I remember. And that's what I pass down to my girls is we go to mass together. They're all in college now. And that's the scary part is, are they going to mass? Are they going to continue with their faith? If you lay this wonderful foundation that all of you guys are here, so you guys want to, that will resonate with your kids. And like they said, it's okay to say, I really don't know the answer to this. Let's find out together. My husband's not Catholic and he asks me a whole lot of questions that I don't know the answer to a lot of times, but we'll go home, I'll Google it or talk with the other people and then at dinner we'll start talking about it. So it's just a great way to really bring faith into your life and show your kids. So, Anna, did you wanna say anything? Okay, we have one other person. And we won't take long, so, and then we'll get to questions right after. Good evening, everybody. My name is Anya Schaefer. Uh, my husband, Daniel, and I have been parishioners here since 2006. So my boys started like Eric and Paige um, kids. They started with uh, PSR. And the same thing happened. They never remembered. I mean, they remember little things. You know, we did this and that. I took them to Mass every Sunday. I, um, we said our daily prayers every single day, obviously, and, um, and I thought I was doing a good job as a Catholic parent. Well, they really couldn't have been further from the truth, and I soon were to find out. And especially, you know, we all have been, obviously, through, the, through COVID, really hard times. All of our lives got turned upside down, and, uh, you know, even the faith formation had to take on the new format as well. So at the beginning, it was pretty hard, like, but it had nothing really to do with the lessons, with the classes. For me, at least, I figured out what the problem was. You see, um, we often try to um, put God, fit God into our already busy lives and, you know, in between the schedules, sports, you know, meetings and so on, rather than trying to arrange all those things around God who should be in the center of our lives. So once we made that change, it really started to get run more smoothly. 
for us. I'm, I'm not saying it was perfect, because we had those days that were really hard, but it got really better. And uh, you know, once your kids know that God is most important, and when you set the time, like we set the time, I said, we're going to be doing those classes on Wednesday, and unless there's emergency, we're not doing anything else. And they knew it. We always started like, um, obviously always start with a prayer. You um, just ask Holy Spirit to enlighten your heart and your minds. And, uh, and you know, and you're really good to go. The, um, just make sure that there are no distractions. You know, turn off TV, all the gaming systems as far, you know, away from your kids as you, as you can put it away as possible. And, um, and, you know, make sure the kids know this is the time for God. It really doesn't take that long. Um, uh, the classes, those lessons were, I think they were organized very well. You get everything that you need. Um, everything is really included with it. Um, it's, uh, for us, it was a really wonderful experience. You know, for me, um, personally, it really showed me, like, you know, having more active part uh, in my children's uh, walking in faith. It really um, opened up my eyes and showed me how little I knew and how little I did for my children uh, in that regard. Uh, but it also uh, redirected me on, um, on the right path. I think we grew closer as a family. We, uh, we are more comfortable praying together as a family. I have to tell you, it's a wonderf wonderful feeling when you have, I've got three boys. My youngest, my youngest one is eight years old and he's a rascal. But when I say the Divine Mercy uh, chaplet and he comes down, you know, and I'm not saying that it happens all the time, but whenever he comes by, he sees me on my knees, he drops down to his knees and recites it with me. It's a really wonderful feeling and I really couldn't have happened. I, I just can't imagine you know, that happening three years ago. So um, this experience, I think, was a blessing for us and, um, and I hope it's gonna continue. I was really happy to find out that the gift was going to be going on because I'm, I think that I'm learning as much, if not more, <laughs> as my children. And, um, you know, we as Christians, we are, we are called to be Christ's disciples and we are supposed to evangelize others. But I think sometimes we'll, we, we really don't know how to go about it. And I believe that um, having been called to parenthood, we've got a pretty easy job. You know, we just have to start at our homes with our own children. So, good luck, <laughs> and I think you're gonna have a wonderful time. Thank you. And I'm sorry, I'm <laughs> so. so I have some forms to pass out to you. Like I said, um, one will have the calendar on one side, and then a synopsis of what we went through tonight. And the other one is, um, there you go. There you go. And the other one are FAQs, frequently asked questions about our program and how to register. So, do we have any questions? We did that good of a job. I like to think, oh, we have a question. Hold up. She asked, how long is the in-person session? They, um, so we have it, like I said, it's at nine and 11, and they're usually about an hour and a half. Yeah. The nice thing is if you come at nine, you get out at 10.30 and you can just scoot right into 10.45. Or if you've gone to 9 a.m. mass, you can go later. We do get that question. It's a long day for kids to go to both um, Faith Formation Gift and to mass, you know, pick a different mass for that weekend. Try a Saturday at 4.30. You can do go to mass and have a fun dinner after, and then the next day go to gift. Or do the five o'clock mass. They have great music. It's kind of the teen mass. So that's always fun for kids to go to. What else? So on that calendar, if you look at it, it does delineate what is the PSR or pre-K-3 and pre-K-6. They are different colors. We also have all of the school vacations on there, as well as some of our um, special nights, parents' night out, any of the um, family nights, family rosaries, things like that. You'll also notice that we do not have sessions in 
December or March. Um, last year, we did not have anything in March. We did a Lenten bingo instead. And that was everyone, as they did something in the SPC community, they were able to mark off a bingo square. That went over very, very well. And so we'll be doing the same type thing. Um, and we'll be designing something for Advent as well. Um, we all know December is definitely a crazy month, but just a way to bring in faith into your family in that month on your own. All right. Oh, yes. Yes. So the orientation in August, it's parents only again, and that will get down into the nuts and bolts. We will get into the live binder. We will get into what the um, explorations will look like, everything like that. Those, I'm thinking they'll probably only be an hour at the most. So they won't, they won't be long and drawn out. We won't start testing you at that one. All right. Well, thank you all for coming. There's lots of food and drink over there if you'd like to stay and chat with each other. Um, I know that Rosemary Potts um, and Colleen Pitroff are going to be doing the sacraments overview, First Communion, First Reconciliation, and Confirmation um, right after this. So if you have a child in those age groups and want to stay, that would be wonderful. Thank you.